Hey guys, Mike and Brad here from Office of the CISO. Uh, this is video one of many to come, specifically to discuss security initiatives, what we see out in the world, uh, pretty much anything and everything that has to do with information security and what you need to, to excel at it and make sure that you're mitigating risk as needed. Uh, we both work in information security hub for 20 years, and some of the biggest things that we get asked are, you know, um, how do I get into cybersecurity? How do I make that jump from help desk or whatever I'm doing now and getting in there, right? Yep, yep, yep. So, and we've got experience with that because we've helped people actually move from help desk or entry level positions over. Um, so we'll start off with, you know, how do you get into cybersecurity? And then we'll transition into some other things. So Brad. How do you get into cybersecurity? How, how? Yeah. Um, Tell us, like, what have you seen in your experience, you know, dealing especially, because most of our focus is enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we know what it's like to have people pigeonholed into help desk roles or very um, rudimentary entry level positions right. like technician and stuff like that. So what have you seen in your experience that's made it beneficial to help transition folks into a, a higher level tier? So your point about being pigeonholed, that's one of the, the biggest things I think is to not get pigeonholed in your mm -hmm. career. Um, if, that, if that means buying technologies on your own so that you can get practice in um, maybe areas of uh, the enterprise that you don't have direct responsibility in your in your uh, current role. The biggest key is to get broad exposure to as many technologies as possible, um, in my opinion. To set a good baseline, especially from, I'd say, especially from a networking perspective, it's, it's key to understand uh, TCP IP pretty strong, to have that as a basis so you can apply that in uh, so uh, especially the network security based technologies. Uh, but I'd say that that'd be the biggest thing is a broad exposure to lots of technologies so that you can understand um, what they are, what they do, their purposes. Uh, so network and identity and authentication, that kind of thing, I'd, I'd say focus on that early in your, in your um, IT career. And understand that the cybersecurity profession is a progression, that it's something you'll never learn everything in um, so yeah head in that direction yeah, yeah so uh, you kind of hit on something pretty pretty heavy there is not getting pigeonholed and the, the angle that you took right was we need to make sure that we're getting experience with technologies whether they're normally available to us or not and that might include some out-of-pocket expense like buying things toying with them uh, you know playing with various versions of of Kali or whatever Linux distro you run for for red team operations or, or learning network security for blue team side of things and stuff like that. Uh, something that I actually see quite a bit from my perspective is um, specifically with regards to being pigeonholed into a role at an enterprise level that may or may not be where you want to stay is uh, your job description, right? So your job description has a list of things. And if you're pigeonholed, those list of things are all you're going to get. So it is, it's painful up front to do this, but it pays dividends in the long run, and that is take on additional responsibility however you can. You yeah. know, so if you're in the help desk and you're dealing specifically with password resets, maybe you help develop a process that's outside of your uh, the scope of your job specifically to help ensure that the user that's resetting their password is who they say they are, if that doesn't already exist in your organization. That's a good idea. So you end up in things like I've had people that were in help desk and they were curious, they'd start asking questions about firewalls. Mm -hmm. You know, how, what do you guys go through? And they just keep building their knowledge there. And then they would end up submitting forms on our behalf, specifically to to expand what they're required to do under their job on their own, on their own doing, because obviously you're limited to promotions or something like that, right? So, yeah. Well, I mean, what you're talking about is exposure. The more exposed mm -hmm. you get to different technologies, then the more responsibilities you'll get put on you. and. Uh, of course, at the end of it, higher higher pay, higher roles, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, I think an, another thing that plays pretty heavy roles, and it's it's usually the kryptonite for IT folks, right? Socializing. Oh yeah. Social. The biggest thing that's going to help you get in the roles that you think you deserve, or that you wish to attempt or move into, move yeah. into, and, yeah. and slide into, it's it's going to take you being social with the people that are in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, there's a really, really big saying, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know. And while it's a little facetious of a saying, it 
has some merit to it. Because it's pretty fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people are going to hire who they know and who they trust first and foremost, even if they're not necessarily skilled for the role. And that may be because they're able to clearly articulate themselves, right? Yeah. Exp- express that they have an aptitude, the willingness, the motivation, the aptitude, right. the right. ability. Right, right. I might not know how to do it now, but you put me in this role, I guarantee you, I'll, I'll sure die. Sure as heck can learn it. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's killer. I think that's killer. And I think also understand your, your own interests and uh, have a direction for for what you're wanting to do. Like mm-hmm. kind, of, kind of have a general direction for your the trajectory of your own career. Um, I know when uh, when I was coming up in early early in my career, I focused on jobs, only on jobs that were in the, the networking direction that I wanted to go because sysadmin server stuff, I was losing interest in it and I was really interested in uh, networks and communications, and that's all I focused on. That's okay. the only role that I applied for. I uh, I took a couple of programming classes in college, and quickly realized that that was not. For <laughs> Figured me. out that wasn't for you. <laughs> um, the whole if then whatever stuff, uh, kind of nuked me. But network architecture, network engineering. So from an operational standpoint, I started doing a whole lot of enterprise level mm-hmm. network engineering. And once you're able to follow the path of the packet. You're able to understand the um, the angles of attack that an attacker would have. It gives you a better kind of like approach on how to how to look at things. Yeah. So um, another thing uh, that I think really hits home is you need to be ready to do grunt work. Yeah, dude. You be ready if to you get a cybersecurity work. analyst role, like if you're able to get your foot in the door with a cyber firm or or an organizational role at your institution that is cyber in nature, you need to be ready to do grunt work. You're not going to pop in and be a, a director of cybersecurity or a security architect or, you know, a, a senior level cybersecurity engineer. You're going to be an analyst, maybe a junior analyst. analyst, yeah. And you're going to be looking at a lot of logs. Yeah, you may spend eight hours a day digging through text. Logs. Right. So, yeah, that's one thing is you need to go ahead and frame your brain, frame your mindset, it's it's not like the matrix. There's not green stuff falling <laughs> down the screen, right? So no, but it all builds foundations for future. Like oh, yeah. it, it all builds bigger picture for you to be able to apply in your your uh, leadership roles as you move move into those. It all helps. Absolutely. <clears throat> cool. So yeah, if you want to get your foot in the door of cybersecurity, be social. Let people n- be social and be vocal. Is probably a good way to put it. Be vocal, saying you know I want to take on more. I have. Capacity on my plate for more responsibility, and I have an interest in this, especially if you're in a big enterprise organization mm-hmm. where you get to mingle in some fashion with those teams. And then, two, be ready to do grunt work and uh, own stuff. Own. That's the biggest thing. So, cybersecurity is a negative unemployment industry. Yeah. We hire really bad engineers and analysts because we need butts in the seats. That's how bad it is. And you're you're seeing a shortage everywhere. I mean, right, right. It seems hilarious and kind of fake but that's the truth right right i mean we've both been in institutions where the the people that are doing cybersecurity analyst roles can't spell cyber are awful yeah yeah so but you, you gotta have them so it's, if, if you're in a cybersecurity role and you can actually perform in it you're gold there's there's no more valuable thing than you self-start yeah. be motivated own your role mm-hmm. and that's that's pretty much how you get in cyber from our perspective, at least, and we got a plethora of experience. And it doesn't matter if you're coming from a programming background, a help desk background, a network right. engineer background. Those are things that are really going to set you on your path. Honestly, man, a, a user background. You could step in it from, from nothing, but just expect yourself to have to put effort into learning all the foundational technologies that make, Absolutely. That make stuff work. And there was a meme I saw online. Um, well, I guess it wasn't really a meme. It was more of a Twitter post. Uh, software engineering company hired someone. The person started as a programmer. They stayed just long enough to fix a bug that annoyed them as a user. Yeah. And then they turned in their two weeks. <laughs> so being able to own something and jump in there can pay big time dividends. Yeah. I mean, imagine being that that focus that you got a bug that you just hate. Just one little I'm going to thing. This. That's awesome. So, so. 
from that perspective, that's how you get into cybersecurity.